So it's a pleasure to be here to talk to you about nutrition and diet, and I'm hoping that you haven't eaten dinner yet, so that you'll get a couple of pointers that you will be able to take home uh, with you. So how to feel young at any age. The good news is that what we eat does affect how we feel, and it definitely does have an effect on our aging process. So I'm going to talk about nutritious meals, weight control, the benefits of incorporating fruits and vegetables, vitamins, minerals, fiber, just touch on sleep, and then we're going to have a speaker who's also going to speak about physical activity. So how many of you have seen this new plate, or the government's icon for healthy eating? Anyone? So some of you have seen it, some of you have not. Um, basically, we used to have what was a food pyramid, and there was sort of a hierarchy of different food groups, and the simple thing and the nice thing about this plate is that half of our plate should consist of fruits and vegetables. So that's really the good news. And eating a diet high in fruits and vegetables is so healthy um, for many reasons that I will address in a little while. So the dietary guidelines are revised every five years by the federal government. And in this last round, several areas came to focus. Portion control, increasing consumption of fruits and vegetables and plant-based foods, and this, these are really great for anti-aging, also reducing sodium and sugar-sweetened beverages. Just yesterday, the um, Center for Disease Control actually released a survey on where's the salt. I don't know how many of you had seen it, but the number one contributor of sodium in our diet is anyone have a guess? Bread. bread, yes, very good. We know about smoked meats, we know about pizza, but bread. The reason is not because bread is so high in sodium, but because we eat so much of it. And particularly, we're eating a lot of white bread. Sugar and salt are common preservatives, so when we eat foods that come out of a package, we're going to be getting a lot of sugar and a lot of added salt. So some of the messages, the key messages are to balance calories, enjoy your food but eat less, avoid oversized portions, foods to increase, half of your plate should come from fruits and vegetables, we should switch to fat-free and low-fat dairy, and calcium is fantastic, especially for women that are aging, uh, to prevent osteoporosis and secure bone health, make at least half of your grains whole grains, and foods to decrease to limit sodium and sugar, and also to drink water instead of sugary drinks. So we hear, what's a, what's a good balance of a diet? Are carbs good? Are proteins good? Are, fat good? are fats good? And the answer is all of them are good if we eat the right types of foods. So it's advised that we consume about 45 to 65% of our calories from carbohydrates. But the good carbohydrates, fiber-rich fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, Robert Atkins would not have liked this, but it is the recommendation, whole wheat breads, cereals, oatmeal, brown rice, and to also choose and prepare foods and beverages with little added sugar and to limit white flour. Fats. So we know fats will give us more calories than carbohydrates, but some fat in our diet is imperative, it's necessary, and it's actually healthy as we age. So total fat consumption should be between 20 to 35 percent of our calories, but coming from the healthy sources. Fatty fish like salmon, tuna, uh, sardines, tuna, because it has mercury, you don't want to have that too often, nuts and vegetable oils, olive oil, canola oil, we also want to select and prepare meats, poultry, beans, and dairy that are lean, low-fat, or fat-free. And we want to limit our intake of fats and oils that are high in saturated fat or trans fats. Saturated fat would be found in meats, and trans fat, which is a man-made fat, would be found in margarines, donuts, fried foods. Protein. We should consume about 10 to 35 percent of our calories from protein. Poultry, fish, and lean cuts of meat. 
and really uh, to include more plant-based proteins. Very often when you see these studies on who lived till 100 and the centarians, and there was a lot of things that they looked at, so often they were vegetarians or they really ate a diet slightly lower in meat and higher in plant-based foods. Beans, legumes, soy. And I have a private practice here in the city and I get asked so often, aren't split peas fattening? Aren't, isn't lentil soup fattening? And the answer is no, it's actually very, very healthy. You know, if you add bacon and you add dollops of um, butter, then it's fattening, but it's actually, beans are terrific and they're a terrific uh, plant protein. So the importance of fruits and vegetables really to preserve our aging process. And the important piece is to have colorful fruits and vegetables because we're going to get different nutrients and different antioxidants from the different colors. Um, for example, if we have that lycopene, lycopene is found in tomatoes, watermelon, it's that red color. Beta carotene is found in carrots, pumpkin, butternut squash. So when you eat by the colors, you're gonna get different anti-aging components. And what vegetables will do is help protect us from disease, and it could also help to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, strokes, and some cancers. Very often people say, I don't wanna eat vegetables, I have no time for vegetables, I have no time for fruits, I'm just gonna pop a pill. Getting the nutrients, getting the vitamin C or the beta carotene from the pill is not going to give you the same benefits. You're not gonna get the fiber and you're not gonna get so many of the other antioxidant nutrients. So it's so important to really try to eat the fruits and vegetables. And fresh is fine. If you live alone, frozen is fine. So just keeping some frozen fruits and vegetables in your, in your freezer is a fantastic idea and we're not far from Trader Joe's and they have great prices also um, on the frozen stuff. And I don't work for Trader Joe's. <laughs> Um, so berries, blueberries is great for cognitive fun function, for memory. Blackberries is the highest on the list of antioxidants. Broccoli is rich in sulforaphane. It also has calcium. It's got beta carotene. Carrots also high in beta carotene. Cantaloupe. So just an assortment of fruits and vegetables. If you don't like one, you could pick something else from that color group. Fiber is so important. Fiber can help to lower cholesterol and have a positive effect on our blood lipid levels. But it, it also helps with weight control because it promotes feelings of satiety, of fullness, and it helps with digestion. Fiber is also good to prevent constipation, hemorrhoids, and it also can help to prevent colon cancer. And some good sources would be whole grains, the skins on the fruit, so you're gonna get some fiber from the center of the apple too, but if you can eat the skins and you like them, that's even better because the skin is gonna have additional fiber and also an assortment of vegetables. Omega-3 fatty acids. They are anti-inflammatory. They're probably one of the best foods if we're gonna find anything for arthritis, for anti-aging, for anti-inflammatory. And omega-3s could lower the risk of certain types of cancers, cardiovascular disease and arthritis. It reduces inflammation. It also can help with cognitive function and the behavioral function in the brain. Good sources would be salmon, walnuts, and flaxseed. So when they say fatty fish, they're not saying, they don't mean fried flounder. So we're really talking, you know, salmon, grilled salmon, however you want to prepare it. And the American Heart Association recommends two fatty fish meals a week. Um, but the serving sizes are quite small. So if you're in a restaurant and you do one a week, that's probably something that's good. Healthy fats are also very important. The Mediterranean diet, they eat, people in the Mediterranean, who follow the Mediterranean diet actually have a higher fat diet than we have um, but they're having more olive oil and they're having more healthy fats. So the monounsaturated fats, olive oil, canola, avocado, they can help reduce cardiovascular disease, certain cancers. They could also lower LDL cholesterol as well as blood pressure. Calcium. Calcium helps to maintain bone density. 
thereby reducing the risk of osteoporosis. And as we age, women are more susceptible than men, but as we age, we do increase our chances of getting osteoporosis. So calcium and also having adequate vitamin D is very, very important to help sort of prevent that aging process. It can also lower the risk of certain cancers, and good sources would be dairy, yogurt, fortified orange juice if someone doesn't like milk or yogurt, also canned salmon uh, with the bones, so the bones are going to be a good source, tofu, tofu preserved in calcium phosphate salt is also an excellent example. Water, fluids are so important, and drinking enough water and fluids throughout the day is very, very important. It can regulate body temperature, lubricate and cushion the joints, get rid of waste, and it also really helps to prevent constipation. And so often as we age, if we're taking multiple medications that are sort of doing a number on us, having enough fluid in our system is really, really important. Vitamin E. Vitamin E is an antioxidant, and it can protect against certain cancers and heart disease. Again, there were some studies back when I was a graduate student a while back that said just taking vitamin E supplements was great, but now the jury has come back and said we really want to get it from our diet. Good sources would be vegetable oils, sunflower seeds, walnuts. Vitamin A can help to keep our skin healthy, give our skin a glow. It could also help with vision in dim light and protect against infection, and it also acts as an antioxidant. Good food sources would be cantaloupe, carrots, and then because it's a fat-soluble vitamin, it will be found as well where some of the fat is, but it's also fortified in cheese and in milk. So here's just a list, of, a common list of several antioxidants. Um, that are just good to include in your diet. Blackberries, walnuts, strawberries, artichokes, cranberries, coffee, so you can make a case for anything these days. Um, chocolate's even on here. Raspberries, pecans, blueberries, cloves, so spices are great as well. Uh, a little bit of dark chocolate, but when I say a little bit, they say less than an ounce, like a Hershey Kissworth is probably enough. If you're going to eat, you know, a whole big bar of chocolate and that's going to cause weight gain, then you're probably going to counter out the positive effects. Um, cherries, a little bit of red wine is also good. So all of these are foods that are rich in antioxidants. And the way antioxidants work is they act as the first line of defense um, and they prevent your body from going through oxidation because they are going to be oxidized themselves in the process. So people who eat diets that are going to be higher in antioxidants from food sources generally can have less risk of disease, less incidence of various chronic diseases. Iron can help improve energy and muscle function and it can also work with brain function. Uh, good sources would be Soybeans, lentils, whole grains, obviously meats and different animal products are good sources as well, but you can get iron from plant-based foods. Zinc helps with immune function and can improve digestion and also regulate appetite. Good sources would be oysters, meat, and poultry. Weight control. Weight control or weight is a big problem with Americans these days. About two-thirds of us are overweight or obese, and maintaining a healthy weight could improve physical health, really boost energy, improve mood, self-confidence, and also reduce the risk of various chronic diseases like heart disease, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, as well as certain types of cancer. Now, we have a balancing act. We have calories in, which is my piece, which I'm talking about the food, and we have calories out, which is exercise, which we'll hear about in a little while. And literally adding an extra 100 calories per day could lead to a 10-pound weight gain in a year. And larger portions will add extra calories, which can lead to weight gain, unless, of course, you balance that with physical activity. My research area is on portion sizes, and I did some research where um, I tracked the history of portion sizes getting big and people gaining weight and found that um, there was a perfect correlation between larger portions and 
higher rates of obesity. Portion sizes are also much bigger than the standards that we use for food labels and nutrition education. So very often when you read a food label, you might be a little confused because you probably eat more than the, the amount on the label, in which case you're not alone. So that can add to some consumer confusion. And portions are two to five times bigger than they actually were in the past. And I'm not talking, you know, 1700. I'm talking 1950s. So really in just 40, 50 years, they really just balloon. And large portions contain more calories than smaller portions. For example, bagels have gotten bigger. In fact, a typical New York bagel is about five or six slices of bread. Soda has gotten very big. An eight ounce soda is 100 calories. That's the white cup with six teaspoons of sugar. 7-Eleven sells the double gulp with 64 ounces and nearly 800 calories, which is about 48 teaspoons of sugar, unless you fill the cup up with ice, which most of us probably don't. The Center for Science in the Public Interest comes out with an award, the Extreme Meals, the Worst Meals. And this is an example of one they came out with this summer, the King Fries Bowl, French fried potatoes with Philly Whiz, a cheese-like substance with bacon, sour cream, and chives. 1,500 calories, 5,000 milligrams of sodium. So that is about a day's worth of calories that many of us need and about three days' worth of sodium. So that's just one meal. Uh, this is my book, The Portion Teller Plan, where I track the history of portion sizes getting big, but also really provide user-friendly tips, tips and tricks to help people manage their weight and really understand what they're eating. So I have a set of visuals, for example. Uh, three ounces of meat looks like a deck of cards. A cup of pasta looks like a baseball. Uh, cheese, an ounce of cheese looks like four dice. And a serving size of peanut butter, when you look at the label and it's two tablespoons, looks like a walnut in a shell. Also, how big are typical foods and how do they compare to others? One typical bagel is like eating five slices of bread, two and a half English muffins, or 15 cups of popcorn. Now, I'm not telling you to come in with a tub of popcorn, but it's just when you see that you can have, you know, 15 cups of popcorn, you almost wonder, is it worth eating that bagel? Because we eat in units, and a bagel is one unit, so you would never think that you're going to get that many calories. A typical steak at a local steakhouse could be the equivalent, 18 ounces, of eating six cans of tuna or 18 eggs. Um, so unfortunately, when we only get one broccoli floret on the plate, we want to eat the whole steak, right? So the problem is that we need to almost work with the restaurants and say, why don't you give us smaller steaks, smaller portions of meat, and give us an extra serving of vegetables. So one good idea is for people to share. You could share that steak three ways, get some extra salads, get vegetables, get a baked potato. Um, but when we're served such a jumbo portion, we often want to finish it. And if we're not given vegetables on the side, then we're still hungry, so we just eat it. So we want to adopt a more plant-based diet. It's high in fiber rich in antioxidants, chock full of vitamins, minerals, and the good news is that you can eat more. So you could fill up your plate. In fact, I had a client yesterday who said to me, I don't understand this. It makes sense, but you're telling me that I can eat more and lose weight. Because if you eat more fruits, more vegetables that are not high in calories, it fills up your plate and you feel more satisfied because it's not energy dense. It's not rich in calories. I also always like to give people healthy substitutions. And what are some foods that you could substitute instead so that you walk away with some ideas? So instead of that bagel, have whole wheat toast or a whole grain English muffin, oatmeal instead of a corn muffin, grilled fish or tofu instead of fried chicken, fresh fruit snacks instead of juice, olive oil instead of butter. And snacks are okay, but you just want to keep them to be healthy snacks. And you don't want to have a snack, and then you're having enough calories for it to be a full meal. 
all fruits, bagged vegetables, non-fat yogurts, even soy yogurts, a handful of nuts, a granola bar that's whole grain, so the first ingredient should be whole, have the word whole in it, whole rolled oats, whole grain. Whole grain crackers are good. So often I hear, but carrots, oh, I'm going to gain weight if I eat carrots. They're so fattening. So here, take a look. You have a stack of carrots, and you've got one equivalent to one cube of sugar. This is how many carrots you would have to eat. Of course, you want to peel them, but this is how many carrots you'd have to eat before you can guzzle down that 20-ounce bottle of soda. So next time your friend says, I'm not eating carrots, I'm on a diet, aren't they high in sugar, I'm going to say, Americans did gain weight because of the carrots. <laughs> Same thing with bananas. That's another food that has a very bad rap. It's a little higher in calories than cantaloupe, but again, it's not a fattening food. It's high in potassium, it's high in fiber, so it's very healthy. Alcohol, alcohol is definitely healthy in moderation. Five ounces of wine, 12 ounces of beer, one and a half ounces of hard liquor. But what I will say is while the American Heart Association does recommend it, the American Cancer Institute does not, particularly because um, just one glass of alcohol can increase your risk of breast cancer. So if that's what you're concerned about, then you can limit the alcohol. If you're concerned about heart health, then one drink a day in moderation is good for you. But nobody got heart disease from a deficiency of alcohol. So. <laughs> If you don't drink, you don't need to start. Same thing with chocolate. If you don't eat it, you're not missing anything. You don't need to start. And dessert is OK on occasion, but you always want to think moderation. Even though some people don't know how to define moderation, and there's been lots of controversy about the definition of moderation, particularly around Paula Deen and everything that's been going on. So to boost energy, we want to eat balanced meals, we want to include lean protein, healthy carbs, fiber, and healthy fats. We don't want to skip meals. We want to eat something for breakfast. It doesn't have to be a big breakfast, but something, with brec something for breakfast with whole grain, fruits, maybe low-fat dairy so that you know you're sort of getting some healthy nutrients in the morning. Stay hydrated. Drink plenty of fruits. Eat, drink, plenty, drink lots of water and eat plenty of high-water fruits and vegetables. And you also want to watch calories and portions. Exercise, I'm not going to touch on this because we have an, ex an excellent presenter who's going to talk about exercise. But there's lots and lots of benefits for exercise, and particularly also for strength training. So many people are so worried about cardio and losing weight. But strength training has many, many positive benefits as well. Sleep is also very, very important. So getting seven to nine hours is ideal can help also manage appetite, maintain weight, improve energy, and maintain brain function. And then I'm going to end with what kind of sandwich is in fattening? And the answer is a half a sandwich. <laughs> so thank you very much. And here's my contact info if anyone would like to reach me.